sure we can try try to get everybody um, into the Google Classroom. And we're going to do a brief look at what the project will look like. It's always good to have that vision in your mind of why we're being asked to do this or this, um, what it's going to lead to. So we'll take a look at those things, brief look. And then we're going to be looking at the financial literacy resources, really trying to dive in, explore them a little bit so that we can kind of catalog those resources for other educators who might be using these resources in the future. So these are some of the questions that we'll be, be asking ourselves as we look at those resources. So let's dive in to Google Classroom. Some of you have already joined and I think I have it. Yeah. Oh. So there's a link for you to join the classroom if you haven't already. You really, that, that's like job one. You really want to make sure that you're in the classroom because that's where a lot of the materials are going to be that we're going to use for that project. So let's take a real quick look at Google Classroom now. Um, the stream is your main page. That's where you will get announcements. Here you have uh, people who have joined introducing themselves. And right now it's folded up. I'm circling where it says 11 class comments. If you wanna read through the different introductions that people have made, just click on that and it expands. And you can read through and see the people who have joined and introduced themselves. And when you want it to fold back up, you just click it again. So this is the main page. We call it the stream. This is where the people have joined, and this is our classwork. Now, your page is going to look a little different than mine. I can see some things that you cannot, um, but you should be able to see some things right here in Project Info. The first item says that, that slides for today, so you have access to those. Then you have some project examples we're going to look at in just a minute. You also have um, access to the Padlet, which we'll use to do some deep dives into the resources in just a short period of time. You also have this item, Info Session. For those of you that didn't get to attend um, the Info Session, that's the recording and the slides, so you can go back into it. And then um, as we move forward, you probably don't see session one on your page yet because we don't have items visible there. But that's where you'll find the materials that we use for each of the sessions going forward. Okay, I'm going to stop and see if anybody's having problems getting into Google Classroom. And this is a small group. Feel free to unmute and and to speak up, or you can use the chat, either one, but it's very casual today. Good morning, Mary. This is Veronica. Hi, Veronica. Yes, and um, I'm very much wants to stay with the group. And as I look at the future dates, I just wanna to bring to your attention that June the 15th, I will not be available. Okay, all right. And with um, other people in your group, um, you should be able to catch up that way and we record sessions so you can always go back and pick up the recording but okay. um, especially that first one we're going to be introducing the workbook so you'll want to make sure you do catch up with the video on that one okay thank you you're welcome so if anyone has any trouble getting into google classroom just be sure to let us know because that's that's just the 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 center, that's the hub for us to stay in contact with each other throughout the project. Right. So this is what we're building. A wakelet, which is simply a curation tool. Um, we are creating a teacher facing resource. This is not intended to send students to and for them to work their way through. And I'll show you why. It could be a little bit overwhelming because what we're trying to do is to provide a lot of resources that educators could choose from. So each topic that we're looking at is going to, in the end, 
have a wakelet like this put together with resources that educators can use to work with students. Again, it's not something you send students to, it's something we use as educators. So this is the topic that Jeff and I did to build out the samples. Before we have anybody else do something, we do it ourselves so we can try to um, put it together um, in an organized way. So the first section is gonna be what we ended up calling topic explanations. Those are your financial literacy resources. And we'll talk more about those in a few minutes, the characteristics of the different ones. But we're making sure we um, provide some options. So some of them, um, we also do the links to view it in Spanish, but also in English. So again, this would be overwhelming if you gave it to a student. That's a lot of resources. But what we create is open and adaptable so a teacher could use this as their resource library in order to create lessons. The next section is vocabulary. We'll show you the big glossary that we built, but also each group, each topic will have um, a, a condensed set of words that they'll be working with. This glossary was built using the Money Smart Glossary and the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau's glossary, both government resources. And um, the, um, I'm going to cough, excuse me a minute. The Money Smart Glossary, and as someone said, it's very um, um, extensive, and it is, but it is available as an interact interactive glossary and also PDF format, and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau's glossary is available as a, a PDF as well. And then we're going to build some resources that go along with the vocabulary that we choose for our topics. We'll um, reference some learning chocolate uh, vocabulary study sets if those are available for our topic that we're working on. We'll also um, provide some links to leveled readings for students. These will come from reading skills for today's adults from Marshall Ed and also the Bow Valley ESL literacy readers. But again, you'll have a template and you will be plugging information into this wakelet that can be used as resources from other um, educators. Then there are some other options that we'll explore as we get further into the project. Now I'm gonna take a minute and I think most of those have been, see if I need to stop for the chat. And I don't, everyone is uh, taking care of that. So that is the wakelet. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about the glossary, how we put it together, two government resources, the FDIC's Money Smart and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau's glossary, both um, contributed to a big glossary. I'll give you a look at what we put together and a few additional words along the way that seem to be important, but this is not the glossary that you'll be working with. This is the one that we put together and then we categorized each of the words and sorted them that way. So we provided um, each group with their own mini glossary that they can then choose words from. So once you choose your words, you'll create an open topical glossary of terms, definitions, and media that others can adapt and reuse, okay? So once you get your words chosen, you'll be doing some things like um, you've, you're provided the word and you're provided the definition, but we'll also look for the Google pronunciation link for that word will write a sample sentence using the word and we'll look for images to represent that word. And we will build say like what Jeff and I did for the protect your identity um, topic. We built a slide deck using a template plugging these things in after we found them. And you'll do the same thing. Usually eight to 10 words in the slide deck. And then later on, we'll have the option to build activities using these words. We can do jam boards, um, which if you were in some of uh, the, the project last year, they use Jamboard. You'll be provided a template 
And you can put your words in, arrange it that way. You can use word wall, but we'll have some options further along in the project for you to build your own activities. But the nice thing is once we create these slide decks and these activities, other educators, again, can take what we've created and they can adapt it. For example, they could take these slides, um, make their own copy of it, swap out the sentences, swap out the images to suit their learners. So I am going to very quickly go into the classroom and I want to show you, and you are seeing the classroom now, right? Going to show you some of the project examples. We showed you the Wakelet already. So let's, let's go backwards. Let's go back to the beginning. We're not going to look at it in detail, but this is what you'll have access to after the first session. Each topic area has their own workbook. This is the Protecting Your Finance workbook. The first tab of this workbook has the instructions on it and links to the different tabs. You'll have group members. You'll have things that you create, like Jeff and I have created the Wakelet, the slides, a Jamboard. Um, then you have, this is where all of the resources, the financial literacy resources are that relate to protecting your finances. So all that information is here that you'll have to plug into the Wakelet. You have a list of words that came from that giant glossary that you can then choose which ones you want to work with um, to create your wakelet and to create your slides. So there's little check marks. And for the ones that you choose, eventually you'll fill in the workbook where you have the pronunciation link, the sample sentences, and you find an image for. And that's... That's, um, you have a few other tabs. That's where the reading selections are, where you'll go through and find the ones that you want to inclu include in your Wakelet. You've got the learning chocolate activities, and then you've got some resources to use to find images. So each group will have their workbook that they will share with other members in their group and work in it together. So that is, uh, I think I showed some of the slides, um, but here's the, the full slide deck that we did for the words that had to do with protecting your finances. And I'll just show you a couple, but this is where pronunciation links are tagged to, and you've got your word, your definition, your sample sentence, and your image. This was a similar process that we used when we built the digital skills glossary. These are the six resources that we're using for this project. Um, two of them are government, that's the FDIC and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Three of them are financial institutions and one of them is a nonprofit. And um, we're going to be diving in deep and categorizing those. And um, Jeff is working on something that can be used as guidance for all of us when we share these resources, and he's going to talk about that right now. Yeah, so one of the things that just to kind of pull this all together, and Greg shared earlier in the chat a, um, a sample of the set of wakelets that were created last year from the Staying Healthy at Tech Makerspace. Um, as I said at the start, we've you know, learned over time how to make these better. And one of the things that we've gotten feedback on is basically through makerspaces, we, we are creating curricula. We're creating entire sets of curriculum um, and or libraries of resources that can be used by others. And so this is not something that you will necessarily be, be responsible for creating or, or being um, part, part of creating in terms of writing it. We'll be making this, but this is going to be an overview so that the real point of this library um, is so that we can have available to folks, they can, they can see a topic, they might be interested, they can see different resources that will work for different learner populations, uh, the activities from those resources that align to that particular topic area. So that's why you're working in topic areas and you're selecting from the various resources that Mary um, 
have pointed out earlier and that we're about to explore. And the reason this is important and actually one of the things that, you know, we've we've heard from some of the folks that have been interested in this project, but they're not sure if it's going to be relevant to their learners because they work in correctional settings or their students don't have offline or uh, online access or their only online access is via a phone is we want to provide something that says, here's this library of wakelets that have been created, but here's an overview. If your learners uh, primarily do not speak English, these are resources that you could use from the Financial Literacy Resource Bank. If your learners are mobile dependent for access, um, then these are resources that might be good for them. If you want to be using print resources with your learners, things like Consumer Finance Protection Bureau, a lot of their resources, you can not just print them out, you can actually order physical hard copies for free from them that they will ship to you. Um, so we really want to provide a more robust overview from this project of what the library is and characterizing the resources within so that somebody, um, you know, will have a little bit more background on it as opposed to, say, the Staying Healthy, which is an amazing set of resources, but we don't quite have a uh, an overview that just gives someone an indication of each one of these wakelets has these activities that go with this chapter from staying healthy. Um, so we're learning as through, through all of these makerspaces we run and we're excited that for this one, um, we're going to be adding a, a guide that goes with the library that you're creating. All right, so what we're going to do next is give you the opportunity to dive into maybe at least one of these resources. I'm going to um, grab the link unless someone beats me to it for the Padlet. Move these beautiful faces out of the way. It is also in the... Um, classroom, if you go to the classwork page, you've got access to the Padlet right here. And I also dropped the link. So what we're going to be doing is diving into at least one of these. And um, we've added some questions under each column. And we want your input. Like Jeff just said in the chat, we're going to use what you give us here, what we all contribute to, to for that guide to help provide guidance to other educators about which of these resources might work best for them. So under each one, there are questions. What you're going to do, you're not going to have to add another post, but let's say for USA Hello, what level learners would you use this with? If I look at that resource and I want to respond, I just click where it says add comment and I type there. Okay. Um, and then you got to be sure and um, we don't want triple X there. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> so you just click on add comment for any of those questions. The questions are the same for each one of these resources. And to get to the resource, you just click on the colored tile at the top that has the name on it. So if I wanted to go to USA Hello, I'm going to click right here. And I'm going to explore. And then I'm going to come back to the Padlet and look at these questions and respond there. So I've got 1230. I think, Jeff, what do you think? Do about eight minutes 10 minutes what do you suggest yeah i think that's that's a good range um and again the point here being to just explore a resource that you based on what you know about them or what mary shared you're interested in and this is going to be something we have open for the entire project because part of this is your work in curating that you're going to be doing is is somewhat learning about these resources that are available and we you know as you start doing deeper work with these we want more input on you know this is how i would use this um you know this is a really great feature of this so this is going to be an open padlet for you to contribute um to over the course of the session so don't feel like you have to finish finish but we just want to get this um started this exploration of the resources you'll be working with um in this session all right. And some of you have been exploring already and adding some comments. Some even um, have responded to some of these questions this morning. So um, please take the next, uh, we'll say eight minutes 
and dive in. And we are here if you need us. Just unmute or put something in the chat and we'll be happy to help you.
Okay, well, hopefully you had a chance to explore at least one of the resources um, in, a, in a little more depth and keeping in mind, um, you know, who, who is behind the resources, I think can be helpful sometimes too. Um, what we would like for you to do now is um, we're going to say, open your mic and uh, share some of your initial thoughts about the resource that you chose to explore or resources if you did more than one. Hello, everybody. It's Victor. Turn my camera on, too, I guess. There we go. Um, I like the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and Hello USA. FDIC is, would be my third choice. Uh, the other ones, my experience with financial literacy is extends many, many years. And... Uh, when I think of uh, the big banks, I think of the fox in the hen house. They've been penalized by federal agencies over and over again for uh, financial misdealings with consumers. They get away with it because they pay millions of dollars of fine, but they made billions of dollars in gains. So I don't know. I'm just skeptical of them. That's my intake. I think that's a really good point. Um, and I mean, these are obviously well done resources. I was hoping you'd, you'd say speak, for, uh, Victor, because I saw your comment in hands on banking about Wells Fargo. But then I also saw you said, I do like this site. Um, so I think it's, it's like a cautionary tale of recognizing, as Mary said, where these things are coming from, and, you know, teacher comfort level. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a that's a really valid point. And like one of the things that I think it's the Bank of America one has at the end of all of their like articles and such, it says, does this, I don't, I think it might even be word, does this improve your, your, um, your thoughts on Bank of America? <laughs> like, it's like, what did, did you create this in response to being punished? <laughs> um, so, you know, I think it's, it's a, it's a buyer beware in, in relation to the resources and how, how you're using them. But I mean, there, there's still quality content within there. Um, so we want to make sure people are aware of the content, but in that guide, I think it's going to be helpful for us to make note of that, right. Um, that these are created by financial institutions. Um, this is Veronica. I only had uh, a few minutes um, and I started with the better uh, money habits. And the reason for that is because I keep thinking of the teachers and students. And I think one of the primary foundations when we start teaching finances to our students is creating good habits and um, being able to start in small steps and not overwhelm them. So from my side of the house, I keep thinking how would a teacher use this with their students? Um, just briefly, just looking over it, I didn't have time to dive into the site. However, it did seem to be very uh, well organized. And again, with four primary topics, which are meaningful to the students, primarily savings and budgeting, credit, home ownerships, and investing. And the, for me, most of my experience with my students right now is that they are in um, paycheck to paycheck. So uh, introducing them to savings and budgeting is, is one of my first steps to guide them into a successful life. Uh, it does have more topics which are also related to their lives, such as debt and auto and college, which is where we wanna guide them. So um, this is also, I believe for low intermediate or higher level ESL students, and it could easily be uh, a good activity for uh, Jigsaw activity uh, with teachers. That's what I could do for eight minutes. 
Well, we hope that everyone will continue to explore. Um, even after today, as you have time, the more familiar you are with them, the easier, you know, what's ahead um, is, is going to be. Um, any other um, thoughts about your explorations? The practical money skills, um, I really think can be very, very useful. I've also found that um, money management has a, a cultural component <laughs> added to it. Some people don't, it's not, it's not part of the culture to think about money in such a, a, a futuristic way. Oh, I should have an emergency fund. I should have a budget. Um, I should go, when I go shopping, like when I teach English classes, the concept of having a shopping list before you go to the supermarket, it's a new concept for many. <laughs> Some people just go and see, oh, let's see what I can buy with what I have, but they don't. So it's, it, it has a cultural component and I thought it was very well organized into different topics. Um, and I agree 100% with what Veronica said about um, how useful it is to, for the teachers thinking about the instructors and how they can share the topics on an incremental step-by-step -step process so that they be, can become familiar with the concept of money management. Okay. Out of curiosity, does anyone use um, any of these resources or have you used these resources with your students? And do you have any reflections on that? I had no idea that these resources were available or maybe I did come across some of them, but um, now that they're all gathered here and you've curated all these resources, this is so useful because before what I was doing, I was just Googling myself things uh, as the subject came up and um, researching or photocopying old textbooks and just providing very rudimentary resources. But these are, thank you so much for curating all this and putting it together. So, so, so useful. Well, hey, that's well, great. Yeah, <laughs> it's great to hear. Yes, um, yeah. but you're going to do more cur curation, that's which right. is going to make it uh, <laughs> even easier for teachers to find uh, this like specific uh, activities and guides within these resources around topics. So you know, you may have noticed that you, you know, you, you get to the site, you have to find the menu, and you have to figure out where things are. Um, and so we've kind of compiled everything to a, to a certain degree already, but then what you'll be doing is actually pulling those into that wakelet. And so if you saw, if you remember what Mary had shared earlier, um, it's the specific activities from within each of these things around, in our case, we did financial security, um, that, um, will be in that wakelet. So it's it's even going to be even more helpful. And part of the goal there is so that teachers can see different activities around a topic they find important for their learners. And then from that, like being able to scan through those, see which one is best suited for them um, and for their learners. Um, so you'll be doing curation too, Gloria. <laughs> That's right. We're all we're all in this we're together. All curators. And the more that you can provide input into um, into these resources on the Padlet will will help us make that guide um, even more useful to other educators. Your insight when you um, when you explore these resources. So um, so don't forget that that is linked inside of the classroom. I'll jump in there real quick and remind you it's under Project Info. And the Padlet is right here. So we hope you'll, you'll continue helping us with that. Um, anybody else want to um, comment on one of the resources before we move on? Hi, this is Victor again. Uh, yeah, I agree 
with Jeff and Gloria. These are excellent resources. I've never used them before either, but I've studied a lot of financial literacy programs before, both in English and Spanish. And so uh, I think we can easily pull from the best of these six categories. And uh, on the glossary terms, is hidden fees in there? I had uh, let's see, hidden fees. Um, I know there were some, it's not a specific one, but it can be added. I know that it's referenced through, through another term, but um, that's something else. If you have, if you come across words, terms that you think need to be included, please do let us know. And we're, we'll work on getting a definition that, um, uh, is is workable but also um falls into line with licensing as well All right okay well that's the cynical me wants to add hidden fees smart is this, a, is this a good time to tell them we're charging them for being here today <laughs> kidding, i'm kidding i'm kidding <laughs> that was great <laughs> could that also add uh read the small print Yes, yes. Read small print. Yes, sometimes it's so small that you, you're not even able to read it unless you have a magnifying glass. <laughs> but we teach students to make sure you read this small print in whatever yes. document you're looking at. Uh -huh. So, okay, was, go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, I was going to say, so I think one of the things that we can do is... Um, and as I said, uh, uh, Kate had asked the question and I responded. I don't know if folks saw that. We'll we'll let you know what your groups are at the start of next week. So um, obviously you're going to be channeling your effort towards those topics um, that, and again, we're, we're making sure to prioritize the ones that you uh, indicated you're interested in. But I think, Mary, however we want to do it, either a question um, as an open question that folks can just add um, so that people can, if they do have suggestions for words, they could, you know, put those in there. Um, or if, you know, we want to do it in the sheet themselves, that's, that's another way, but. Okay. Um, we definitely want to solicit your ideas around if there's additional terms. Again, these came from FDIC and from CFPB. Yes. How about we put a question under project info? Okay. I can do that following today's meeting. And if you all just respond to that, we can add any words. And, and this can be true going forward too. Once you get assigned to your group and, and, and you're exploring your own topic resources more, there may be some words that you feel like really need to be added. All right. So as with other at Tech Maker Spaces, you have the opportunity to earn badges. Um, the, the two definites are an EdTech Achievement Badge, and that will be for completing your group's glossary slides. And you have the opportunity to earn a Financial Literacy Achievement, and that's for curating resources for the Wakelet. Um, there may be uh, additional badges in the future. We'll see how things go as far as uh, creating. Um, and um, Yes, Kate, absolutely, probably um, run across even more as you're building that glossary to support the resources in that, um, in that curated collection. So keep your eye out um, for those badges. And uh, once again, a reminder of the updated project schedule. It is in this slide deck. Um, and um, I think we also shared that in the reminder email that went out yesterday. But please, please do not forget Help us recruit so we can have enough people for all of the topics that we have. Um, okay. And we will stop there to see if any of you have any questions. Yeah. All right. If there are no questions, then um, feel free to sign off and we are available via email or through the Google Classroom. So don't hesitate to reach out.
Thank you. Right. Thank I just you. see a question from Thank Kate. Um, were you going to send us some text to share with possible participants? Yeah, Greg, what do you have like a PDF version or you had sent um, or Zara the yes. the link to that? Yeah. yeah, we're going to be sending um, an e-blast the same way they registered for this one and a flyer to all the participants. So, Jeff, if you could just send me um, the sign-in sheet, the attendance mm -hmm. sheet for this one, and then the recording, and we'll send both over. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you.